Hey, what's going on, people? It is Wednesday night, episode number 11 of the um, Heavy Metallurgy Album Club. Thank you all for joining us and our esteemed panel. Jim, TJ, Alan, evening gents. How are we all doing tonight? What's up? <laughs> doing pretty good. Jim is uh, on mute constantly. <laughs> <laughs> the endless battle of the mutes. Hey, Mutie. Still on mute. Still on mute. Ah, Still on mute. There you go. Ah. <laughs> you, know how, you know, technology is for the elderly. It's tough. Damn you, know, old man. Hey, it's not working. <laughs> Freaking touch pads. Right on. <laughs> we have uh, gathered tonight to discuss pestilence. Exitium, Alan. It was it was your choice this time. What what made you think this is the one? This is the one we needed to dig into before I dump dive into the a little brief history. Sure, um, it's actually pretty simple. I was at the record store about a month ago, flipping through the CD bin, and <clears throat> there's a Pestilence album sitting there called Exitividum, and I was like, <laughs> huh, wonder if that one's any good. And I was like, started to pick it up. I was like, eh. Yeah, I don't know. It's a newer album, and I haven't heard anything from these guys for a while. Yeah, and I, I tend to be real gun shy with those kind of reunion things, and maybe that's something we'll talk about later tonight. Uh, so I was like, uh, I don't know if I want to blind buy that. Uh, those fourteen dollars feel pretty comfortable in my pocket where they're at. <laughs> no, so maybe I'll check this out another time, and if it's good, you know, I'll circle back and buy it. But. uh so I put it back, did not buy it, but as you know, I, I kept it in mind. It's like, yeah, it's something I should, uh, I should check out. I really haven't, you know, paid much attention to Pestilence since they got back together. So when it was my turn to pick, I was like, hey, this would be a good opportunity to uh, revisit Pestilence and see what that most recent album is actually like. So that is why I picked this one. They're a band that I've liked. But yeah, I really only know the older albums, so it's a chance to kind of dust off Pestilence and uh, catch up on what they've been doing. Very, and at this band, I know, I know for TJ as well, it was huge for me back in my teen years. Huge, mm -hmm. their debut oh, yeah. and the um, Consuming Impulse are just essential, essential, awesome European metal for sure. So it's been kind of cool to uh, check in and see what's been going on. It's been a while since I've been digging digging into these guys as well but um let's jump into a little bit of history here um the band was formed in 1996 by the members patrick mamelli who was on guitars and vocals a randy meinhard on guitar and marco fadis on drums uh, martin van drunen joined after the first of two demos he was on bass and vocals the band signed to Roadrunner Records on the strength of those two demos. Um, the debut album, Malleus Maleficarum, came out in 1988. It had more of a dark thrash style. Uh, the band changed quite a bit between in the course of a year. And on Consuming Impulse, their second album had more of a dehydrated death metal sound thanks to uh, Van Drunen's vicious vocal style. Um, he left the band. I don't know if he was fired or left or what the hell happened there, but um, Testimony of the Ancients came out afterwards with um, Patrick Mamelli back on vocals again. Um, it, that album found the band realizing their full direction and sound, which will has remained with them to sound, seemingly this day. Um, on 2021's Exitium, Exitium, which came out on the Agonia Records label. So yeah, um, Alan. Since you uh, fired this off, let's uh, let's go with you. What's your first impression of this um, album? Uh, first impression when I you know, dialed it up online to listen to it was this sounds a heck of a lot like Testimony of the Ancients. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at the album, it you know has you know kind of classic pestilence cover. There's you know the center part looks a little bit like you know that weird time wheel mechanism thing yep. from the old cover too, even. Uh, the songs have those same kind of little introductory parts on testimony. They, of course, were individual songs on this album. The little intros are part of the uh, regular songs, but uh, yeah, the songs are kind of structured the same way. 
So I was just like, huh, this really does seem kind of like a, a modern revisit of Testimony of the Ancients, which is okay for me because I, as we were talking about in the dugout a few minutes ago, I like Testimony of the Ancients. I know it's not me most too. people's favorite album by the band, but I've always thought it was quite good. So that was my first impression. You know, I got to the end of it, it was just like, well, fuck, I should have bought this album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I kind of yeah. like it. Um, yeah, but again, I had no idea what they were, which direction they were going to go. And apparently, they, uh, my first impression was they very went, much went hard in the uh, testimony camp. All right, Jim, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think it's a, a really cool album. Uh, you know, definitely, I, I agree with Alan. It's got a, a testimony of the ancients feel, though it's definitely certainly in line with, you know, stuff since their resurrection macabre comeback, you know. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, we'll get into it a little bit more. I, I, you know, there, there's some uh, orchestrations on. It I think are a little over the top for me, but but there's some also badass riffs that kind of make me forget about it. So, um, it, it's good to see that you know those guys can you know you know still bring the heavy you know and and, and make for a great entertaining listen after what is it, 37 years you know or however many. You know, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. DJ, first impression. Um. I my first impression was that it sounded about what I expected it to sound like. He, uh, Mameli really has not deviated from the sound or style, um, really since Testimony. Uh, I mean, it, it he refined it more with when he he reformed the band. He, um, he doesn't want to say uh, uh, it's not a uh, you know. Uh, a, a, not reformed what it's out of came he he had there was an article i read about it, it was like um but when he brought the band back and resurrected the band let's say i think that was what the way he put it and um it was a little more refined from that but it's still it's, you know you go to the testimony to resurrection macabre it's like it's very identifiable well i don't know that al i still feel like that album had more common with consuming impulse than maybe but but it 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 struck me as the first impression is that you know it's about what i expected it to sound like it's you know um and, and it's good um you know we can get dive deeper into some of the other stuff but overall it's it's i wasn't i wasn't surprised um by what i heard as far as the, the record goes so i you know back to you on that uh for me um I remember when testimony came out i mean after consuming impulse that is just such a a raw bare wire sounding album it's just so visceral sounding to me so when testimony came out it took me a minute because that testimony of the ancients is a very polished album it's got a really slick production um the guitar work got a lot more sophisticated i would say a lot slicker and, but Mameli's vocals were good. I mean, he was in the same kind of range as um, Van Drunen, but less, you know, you couldn't hear chunks of his vocal cords leaving his body when he sang type of thing. <laughs> he, definitely, but, he definitely took a page out of his book for sure. Oh, for sure. And, um, you know, yeah. heck, probably, obviously, they're both from the Netherlands. Maybe they've got similar, you know, you know, the accents in their English. I don't know. Who knows? But... Um, this new one, I haven't listened since Resurrection Macabre. I checked out. I might have had a listen to it online. I thought it was good. But this album, I, I really enjoyed it. It sounds like it would fit perfectly in between Testimony of the Ancients and Spheres. It sounds like the perfect bridge album. It sounds like the follow-up to Testimony. And I was actually a little surprised by that. Even in sound, it's kind of a slick production. Um, I liked it. I've listened to it. I listened to it a good four times today and I enjoyed it every time learned a little bit more about it as we went, but we'll get into that. Um, I guess before we jump into, you know, the album, I, I guess, well, let's talk about this, I guess 33 years of pestilence with a sound that remains quite consistent. Well, you know, it's quite an accomplishment. Does their sound and style stand the test of time? Do you think Alan? Uh, I think, they actually do pretty well. Uh, again, there's a big chunk of material I haven't heard. Um, this is, like I said, the first of the newer albums I've checked out. So I can't really speak to those albums. 
but yeah, over time, yeah, I think they've you know kind of got their own niche. Uh, you know, for me, they've always been a great example of a band that got a nice balance between you know the death influences and the thrash influences that they you know, sometimes maybe lean more towards one or the other, but it's usually balanced really nice. And as such, most bands don't manage that. They either go in one direction or the other. Yeah. And uh, as such, you know, I think Pestilence you know, has their own uh, niche and their own sound. And they maybe aren't the most prominent of those legacy bands from the 90s, but they're, they're definitely up there. You know, it's a name that people are going to recognize. They've got you know those two classic albums under their belt. So, yeah, I, I think they've earned their place and... Uh, fit in quite nice, Jim. Yeah, man, I, I I think that you know when when you can play as well as uh oh man, I forgot his name. <laughs> Mamelli, <laughs> Patrick he, Mamelli, yeah. Patrick. Man, Patrick. Man, when you play man, as well as Patrick, yeah. I mean, you know, you're always gonna be pushing boundaries, and and uh, when you can push boundaries, you know. And but also stay true to who you are. I mean, he he just plays. It's death metal, yeah. It's got a lot of jazz and other influences in there. But you know, the the, the music is going to be interesting. You know, it, it, is it always going to work? You know, maybe not. Um, you know, you know, there's some strange moments on this album, like the second track where there's some weird like groove metal type riffs, which was kind of bizarre. I was like, what? I didn't understand what's going on there. And uh, but. For the most part, his 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 guitar playing is like you know it's 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 stray, but but there, there's um, sense there and, and feel like it, it you know it, it stays dark, and you know it, it perpetuates like a, a vibe you know that it, it isn't just him just like okay this guy's gonna needle away you know noodle away for a, a few minutes you know it, it, his solos make sense in the context of the song and uh and and that's and that and and you know and alan was talking about this earlier how they have intros and outros that kind of they really are part of the song and 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 this record and much like testimony of the ancients they 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 weave everything together where it it's not like a concept album per se uh, except for all the u's turned into v's <laughs> uh, but uh you know i don't know maybe it is but it it it, it has a vibe that's consistent where it, it it would feel awkward to just like fast forward a song or stop somewhere. So, you know, you've got something kind of quality when, when you, you, you feel compelled to, to go beginning to end with it. So. What do you think TJ? Does her sound stand the test oh, I, of time? Oh, for sure. I, you know, I mean, he's kept it consistent since the word go, as far as, you know, the, the, the content of, of the music that he's putting out. I mean, granted the first three records, are like three different bands, you know? Yeah. Um, but once he, once you get to the third record, it, it's pretty much what you get from there to now. And even though, you know, with a little variation, like say, like with resurrection macabre and stuff, but definitely, they definitely, you know, he, he has definitely taken, you know, what he does and, you know, he, he has a, a, a style and, and a way of, of you know his the way he writes and, and arranges it's it's very identifiable it's very you know it, it, it and you can you listen to this record and you can trace it all the way back you know he he hasn't kind of stepped too far outside the lines as far as what he sounds like and the way he writes songs um and i think i think but it but it it doesn't you know i don't think it's stale by any stretch i i definitely feel like he's kept it relevant um, you know, am I, am I more engrossed by the, the earlier things? Well, I, I'm always kind of, you know, yeah, but with this band, of course, but it, again, it, it's, I definitely feel like, um, he's, he's kept what he's doing relevant and it's definitely stood the test. And, 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 and as Alan said, they are definitely, you know, you can't really, you know, you know, Van Droon in consuming impulse kind of thing. I mean, those, th th that stuff, there's, there, there's such seminal kind of, pieces of the the early scene and where we are now and you know i mean the the, the shift that they took from uh malleus malficarum to consuming impulse and how they just like this is what death metal is now here see and like holy shit yeah yeah, yeah it is <laughs> you know like wow so i definitely it definitely definitely stands the test yeah 
and and I and I agree with that. I um I I mentioned in my intro for this I that I think this band still lives in the in the shadow of the first two albums, which it really isn't fair because they've been the way they are now for way longer. They've written some great albums, but Van Drun has got such a charismatic style and voice um that and he went on to be in Asphyx and um hail of bullets and he's had a very and he was in bolt thrower for a hot minute i mean he has grand imperial prom- blood court yeah that too yeah <laughs> I, I, totally, I totally forget that but yeah. um he, he's stayed in the public eye and his voice remains to be pretty fucking killer um so it hasn't you know and still this day i still see people showing consuming impulse on the in the vc on the youtube channels they're still talking about that record and I don't remember the last time anyone's shown a Pestilence record, a, a recent-ish Pestilence record. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's bad PR, bad labels. I don't know. But does it stand the test of time? It does. But um, it just kind of blends into, I said, let's discuss the difference between old and new school death metal. How does Pestilence hold up in the modern climate of new bands trying to sound old? And I got to say, I'll jump in here since since I'm I'm big. Um, it's, uh, listening to the album today, it struck me as pretty refreshing, even though I've heard it before, it sounds exactly, you know, like Pestilence, you know, they're an old school death metal band that they don't tune down. They're tuned. I don't know what they tune to, but they're not tuned low. And, um, they're actually like a lot of the old school bands writing riffs. There's songs in there. There's riffs in there. There's things that come back. The new school of death metal trying to sound old or either aping an HM2 band like um, what? I can't remember the names right now of the bands, but um, there's HM2 styled de- old school death metal. And now and there's also this polluted cavernous style, which if you we said it before, I've said it before, if you listen to it now, it's 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 more about the sound and the reverb than it is about the riffs. Super low tuning which you know is a guitar player tj can attest to this if you're tuned to an a or lower it dictates the way you play it's just got that jung 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 yeah you just want to jung 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 on that low a yeah, well, over and over it, it definitely does it definitely wants to it it, it, it wants to d- define how you how you structure and play and, and so it it does monopolize your writing you know because you just kind of have to you have to live inside that tuning so it definitely does you, you live with the you sound you, you rely on yeah. the sound for your inspiration yeah yeah and you know that and that that's one nice thing about this record it there's everything is completely audible the riffs are really good they're um very catchy it's it's an old school that to me sells it as an old school album what do you what do you think jim the yeah, old- it's, it, cool. it, it, yeah it definitely has a throwback you know to you know the old school because and they're in their thrash roots because it, it's 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 either standard or or not something low, low to your point like d at the most um so and you know there's a lot of like alternate picking as opposed to tremolo picking going on here yeah. you know a lot of like yeah. chords that are kind of like shook that makes them sound progressive you know they're not just like playing them straight they're kind of bending bending and you know making them slide and sound a little dissonant and you know intentionally off key which again makes it interesting you know makes it makes it more unique um the only thing that i think um makes it uh uh, maybe a little too new school sounding for me is uh the orchestration choices like there's just some weird keyboard action going on here uh like in the choruses and stuff like it's supposed to sound dramatic but it kind of comes off as kitschy to me And, and that that to me is like the the one big criticism I have of the album. I, I just I, I don't understand it. It seems out of place, even though there was some of that on Testimony of the Ancients back in the day, maybe a little bit more on Spheres. It just seemed like it in the production in the mix. It was like in the background a little bit more. But for some reason, this these weird orchestrated moments are like way up front, and uh, and instead of being like you know subtle or um, you know, or, or really adding to the sound. I think they just kind of washed out everything else. It, it, it felt like, you know, I, like almost like cradle, like latter era cradle of filth, something going on there. And I was like, whoa. So, I must have missed uh, that part of the, all the times I've listened to this album. I must have missed that. I must have stepped oh, yeah, out of the room yeah. all the same I, time. 
you know, check out the title track. It's 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 there. Um, and uh, and on the second song, Deficus, <laughs> which is all, title of the year. Uh, that's an amazing <laughs> title. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but unfortunately, that's like the best thing about that song. That 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 one, it's it's really bad. The, the orchestrations are all over the place, and it just it makes it sound real jangly. And and then it like goes into this like weird kind of like groove metal riff like after the first chorus. I'm like, what? So I I started to like get really fearful about the album at that point. But once it got to the third track, everything it got it got better and better, and everything was fine. So um, yeah, so. I'm definitely not a fan of that. I, I don't really understand the choices, you know, um, you know, uh, I, it, it would seem very distracting to me, but, but well, once I got past that, you know, um, I, I could, you know, see the connection with what came before and also see how, you know, you know, given, you know, Patrick's talent, you know, how he's able to like, you know, connect the dots between, you know, 30 years ago and today and do something that still makes you wonder like, Hey, how did he do that? Or, or like, the choices that he makes as a guitar player, you know, you know, if you're a musician are, are, are super interesting on this record, you know, just uh, for me, it, you know, maybe not gotten rid of the orchestrations. Cause I know that's a part of old pestilence, you know, but just like bury them a little bit. Like I, I don't want them when I'm listening to like death metal, I don't want them over the guitars. I want them behind the guitars. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's my one kind of gripe of the album. Alan, what do you think about this whole old school versus new school sounding old school debate? Yeah, yeah, it, we've talked about it some before. Um, yeah, there's a I know, lot. Of, I know you haven't run out and bought the new Cerebral Rod or anything, but <laughs> no, no, I haven't. You know, there's a lot of you know newer what? death metal bands that are good and interesting, but um, as we've talked about, yeah, a lot of the newer bands do focus a little bit more on the atmosphere and less on the riffage, and that's. You know, one of the things that yeah jumps out at you really fast on this album, uh, you know, it's a riff fest, which is what you kind of want it to be. Um, you know, some of them, yeah, like Jim said, you know, there are parts that you know where it's a little tighter or you know a little more distinct than others, but it, it feels you know <clears throat> one thing after playing some a couple times, it started to feel like it's like this is sort of a lesson in how to do really good old school death metal that it's not just about making it atmospheric sounding, although pestilence does use some atmospheric components. Um, you know, it's, you know, short songs, very tight for the most part. You, you know, you get in, it hammers away. You've got, you know, you know, crazy, you know, tight technical guitar stuff. You've got great riffage and you get back out. You, you don't have to spend eight minutes letting the song drag on you don't have to, you know, bury things in, you know, layers, uh, you know, that makes it sound like it's recorded in a cavern. Like you said, Marty, it's got a pretty good production. Everything's pretty yeah. clear on it. Um, you know, the album doesn't have to, you know, be, you know, 58 minutes or 78 minutes. Yeah, it's a short album. It's, you know, quick. It's to the point. It checks most of the boxes pretty nicely. Uh, it's got a good balance of heavy, fierce, technical. You know, like Jim said, a lot of interesting things. It's like, Whoa, that's cool. Didn't expect that there. So I think this um, is an example of one of these albums where, to an extent, that maybe they're not doing this intentionally, but it's one of these older legacy bands just you know saying kind of, a, stand back, <clears throat> let us show you how this is actually done. Uh, <laughs> everybody you know who's you know 35 and younger, just sit over there, pay attention. We'll walk you through it because uh, th this is how you really put it together. Um, not just with, you know, lots of, not just saying, you know, that you've got, you know, a caveman sound and forgetting to write riffs on your album. What are your thoughts, TJ, on the whole death metal through the ages type of what, scenario? What do you mean? The, the old versus new sounding old? Yeah. Is that what, is that yeah. was the question? And how does well, Pestilence hold up like, in the modern climate of it? Well, I... I think that I feel like that he's you know he's kept himself relevant and his sound. I mean, he's they're spot on. I mean, they're they're tight, they're solid. They stand toe to toe with anybody that's out there. You know, do they sound modern? You know, maybe, but not not in. in but I guess it depends on what sense you mean. You know, the production is slick. 
the tones are 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 new, new um, you know, but it's still, you know, it's unmistakably they do sound like them. You know, he, you know, Mamelli's songwriting and and the, the way he, um, it, it it's it's really it is their own. And I mean, going back all the way, really, like I said before. You, you can't really listen to this record and not pick up the cues from everything that he's done post consuming impulse and and those those trade that dna is in there too obviously um but i mean even like you know when he when they did resurrect from a and he released uh, a couple of uh re worked versions of songs off of consuming impulse and malice malficarum and like totally changed them around with their, their their kind of more newer sound they were absolutely killer <laughs> you know what did he do chemotherapy and uh well, i can't remember what the other was two of them that he did um but uh you know they, they definitely uh you know but yeah, he did a couple as, on uh, the end know, of that didn't he that's right i forgot about that yeah he did and they're they're and they're great they're absolute i was just i was really blown away by how well they were crap you know he just did a hell of a job on them um, but, uh, you know, as far as the newer bands and everything else, like, I don't, you know, we kind of talked about this, like, I don't have a big problem, you know, because it's, it's just the cyclical nature of, of things like this, you know, music and stuff. It's like, we're, we're getting decades and decades into metal and, and, you know, where rock and roll is coming up on whatever, you know, how many 70 years or you know, whatever it is. And, and so it's, it's only natural that the, you know, new generations will discover it and new bands will form and, and they will ape the sounds of the predecessors and they will do these things and some will rise above and others won't, you know, and I kind I enjoy it. I, I like kind of trying to dig through and try to find what's cool and whatever. And yeah, some of that stuff, there's a few, you know, like too old is a band. Um, you know, I mean, they kind of came, out when it really started happening and they're killer you know they're just absolutely so good um and then all these other bands that started coming after and it's just like oh man it just you know it's just ridiculous this is tuned to be slather it and reverb and just you know puke in the mic and and then, and then you know we'll get signed a 20 buck spin i just you know i don't you know so it gets some of it just gets lost on me but you know the, with pestilence it's like there, you know, I think, you know, he is definitely, they have definitely, um, you know, kind of firmly planted their feet into something that definitely is, you know, it's contemporary, you know, it, it, it stays on, on, on task and, and it presents something that isn't, you know, uh, dated so much as some, some other bands might be, you know, um, that made any sense i don't know but <laughs> and so i think i think overall yeah i mean it's uh you know i think they do a good job of, of making uh you know his you know this record anyway you know and, and the stuff that he did before you know it, it all none of it really falls away like oh man that you know that that shit you know you should have put that out in 90 or whatever you know it's like no the exidium sounds like it came out today you know but still sounds like pestilence you know so I, yeah I mean, that's kind of my take on that anyway so right on yeah yeah something just a quick follow-up uh on tj's point yeah you know they really do lamelli maintains that sound really good it looks like he's managed to do it with a pretty steadily rotating cast of characters around him too which i didn't realize but um it doesn't look like he you know it looks like there's been a lot of guys in and out of the band you know since he got it back together oh but... yeah it's yeah yeah so that's interesting too that it's... that's about it i yeah i think it was yeah, like testimonies but... i think it was like him him and one other guy or one original guy and then after that it was just him and it has been pretty much and then he just wrote you know just you know it's another uh mustaine if you will you know just like whoever wants to come and jam with him and he gets him in and does what he does mm -hmm. you know yeah but yeah you know yeah unlike you know a, a death situation where you know the album you know chuck kept you know changing the band sound as he also changed the lineup. Yeah, Mameli seems pretty good at somehow keeping that core sound, even though he doesn't have that core group of musicians with him, which is kind of cool. Right. 
Right. And that's that's another that's another thing. You mentioned death. I listened to this new album and you know, when testimonies came out, I was listening to a lot of death. It was during that era of, you know, the where death started to become more of a polished, less straight up cult death metal, you know, with evil Chuck at the vocals to more uh, technical and uh I don't want to say proggy, but you know what I mean? More tricky, slick and tricky. <laughs> and uh, it always struck me that Pestilence kind of fit in with that. And hearing this again kind of took me back to that time quite quickly. And that's, you know, people are saying it sounds very modern and, and not very old. So that's what I think of old school. I think of, you know, it teleported me back to that era quite quickly listening to this album, which I that instantly was a sell for me, that for sure. <laughs> But let's uh, discuss the musicality and composition of uh, Exidium. Well, you know, Alan. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go. Oh, no, it's fine. No, no, no it's ahead. fine. It, you know, I was just going to say that, you know, Death and, I mean, they were contemporaries, you know. I mean, they were, you know, they, they were mm-hmm. all kind of doing the same thing. They were, they toured together, you know, and so, yeah. you know, With Patrick Carcass. Mimelli yeah. really, yeah, yeah, and, Patrick Mimelli was really just kind of following a blueprint that Chuck was laying down, I think. And I a lot really, of people were. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, sure. And I, you know, I kind of don't, uh, you know, I, I always kind of assumed that that was kind of, you know, something he was following along. Uh, uh, that's the only thing the straight thought was, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think he was just kind of, uh, I think that was the same kind of, you know, he had similar goals musically like Chuck did, you know, trying to expand on the sound and, and take it somewhere else where Chuck, he, uh, you know, eventually, you know, one interview, he said, you know, he out, outgrew the name and whatever. And, you know, said some things that I found a little, you know, I wasn't, it's kind of a bummer that he had to say stuff, you know, but that's well, they all do that. About. Michael Ackerfeld did yeah. when his voice died and he started being a full prog band, he started discrediting death metal. Well, and not all, all of it. them, but some of no. some of them, not all of them. Some Jim Mateos you know, but... shit on the early Fates Warning shit as being immature when you know they went to full prog direction. You know, it's yeah, it, it's just it's just unfortunate that you know, but I think you know, with Mimelli, I mean, here he is, you know, 36 years and he's still. You know, obviously, he hasn't felt the need to create a, a control, denied, quasi, whatever. But yeah, so that was just uh, that's all I was. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. So, but yeah, Alan, musicality and composition of Exidium. What did you think? Um, pretty impressive overall. Uh, again, <clears throat> good riffage in a lot of the tunes, which uh, of course I always like to hear. Uh, a lot of cool soloing going on um it's, it really does have you know that you know sort of old school solo and uh was sort of like you know give me 20 seconds in the middle of this song and i'm just going to go full on guitar hero but it's very tight you know it fits uh you know it has that wow factor even after you've made it through several songs it's just like damn that's pretty cool that's pretty shreddy um it's got the you know, kind of synth layers that Jim mentioned before. Now they didn't bother me very much at all. You know, Pestilence has used those before and they always remind me of like a more restrained Nocturnus when they bring that element in. So usually for me, it works to pretty good effect because it doesn't take over the songs too much. Um, so that part works pretty well. The drumming is really hammering on this. Really good. Yeah. It, it, it really pounds. Now, again, I am not a musician, my terminology, and I can't you know pick certain things out. I don't know how much of it is triggered versus non-triggered. Um, it does at times start to feel like you know there's a lot of just triggers going on with the drums because it's pounding really good, but it also kind of you know stays in its lane or you know keeps doing the same pattern quite a bit. But yeah, maybe the guy's just a really tight, really fast drummer. But you know, that also stands out. So that even for some of the songs, when they do hit a section where, okay, maybe the riffs here aren't as tight or you know the song's wandering a little bit, the drums really help keep propelling it all forward really well. Uh, I like the way they incorporated the little uh, mini instrumentals into the beginning of the songs here. Uh, compared to when they did that with testimony, I think it works better this time around. So everything is tight for the most part. Everyone's really good. It's it seems like, again like it's a new lineup 
uh, around Mameli, but that he's got a really good cast of characters to put this album together. So I was really impressed with it. I think it's, uh, I think all the parts are working really well on these songs. Jim, your thoughts. Yeah. You know, you know, we're talking a lot about Patrick. I think we all know that, that he's a shredder and everything, but I like how Alan was kind of bringing up the drums and, and that's, that is a high point for me. The drummer is badass, man. On, on the fourth track of Sympaternus, he does mm-hmm. some China work where he says, I mean, dude, <laughs> yeah, I just want to put my head through a wall when I heard that. It, it, was, it, was, it was really, <laughs> really, it, it was super cool. And, and, and there's another moment uh, later on in the album, which, what song was that one? Oh, yeah, uh, Dominati Submissive. <laughs> I'm going to call it that. It's like, it's track seven. Uh, man, the, there's this, just the, you know, they do like a, they go do a halftime tempo change, like a rolling double bass over it. And the riff is just godly. I didn't like it. It's, it's super unique, but also somehow familiar. And that one, uh, an- another just fucking straight out banger. It, a, a really, really amazing song. And, and I like that when, when those guys kind of lock in together, that's when this album is at its best. When, when everybody's contributing something, you know, um, you know, unique and they just clicks and, and definitely on the, on, for me, it's, you know, the, 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 begin the first song, you know, um, you know, Sympaternus, like I mentioned, and, and Seven, you know, those those are just some amazing songs, and, you know, the cool drum work. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with Alan uh, that, you know, there is definitely like a, you know, a very modern kind of a drum sound going on here, and, and you know, and death metal, like I, I, I like a, a, the highs on the kicks, a lo- I prefer them to be down a little bit, you know, um, you know, I, I want them to cut through, but not be, you know, rare bearing, so it, it, it probably is could could use a little of the the high eq out but still overall like there's so much cool stuff going on like it's it's, it's not overbearing you know um the, the only thing that i think is, is is weird is is those just crazy orchestrations and 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 oddly enough i love nocturnus when they did it especially uh, every song on the key it's crazy lake of fire bring it i i i don't know like that 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 works for me but for here it just seems kind of like throwaway um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, they've always done it and maybe it's, it's just personal preference for me. I just wish it was back lower in the mix, but, but yeah, definitely some really, really cool stuff here. Um, you know, and also I got to say something else that I, you know, Patrick's man, his, his voice is great, dude. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he sounds awesome on this. I mean, you know, you know, after all these years, he, you know, obviously he's got that Van Drunen early Chuck style going on, but to, to sound that good you know, 30 something years later. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys did, but I didn't detect any weakness in that delivery. You know, it was super strong, especially on that first song, man. I mean, as soon as he comes in, I was just like, you know, (laughs) it fucking Mm -hmm. invisible oranges and all the way. I was, yeah, I I loved it. So, you know, there's more to to offer here than just what we expect, you know, Patrick's guitar playing, you know, everybody in this band contributes and Patrick's vocals are fucking shining too. So, yeah, yeah. I think folks have mentioned it earlier, but uh, I know Van Drunen's always going to be the you know the standard. But I've always thought Mameli did a really good job on the vocals on yeah. the albums. I've heard him do with them. Uh, he he was an excellent yes. replacement for Van Drunen behind the mic. For sure. Uh, is that up to TJ? I absolutely TJ. agree with that. I've always I've always liked it. Yeah. No, I I I can definitely concur with the vocals. I mean, he's I've I I I've never didn't i've always liked it i mean it was you know when when i was when we were younger and testimony come out and you know you the way you're at it's like what oh he sounds like that oh it's good you know cool and it just it carries over to today and, and he did you know definitely good on this record definitely cool um i mean so my my ba- my take on it's like i think that i think the production is great i think i love the guitar tones i his his choice of guitar tones, even going all the way back to the old days when they were doing things old school and there were no plugins and there was no Pro Tools and I mean you know the tone on Consuming Impulse, the tone on Malleus Malficarum, just just so great. I just just love it and even now it's uh, you know it, the newer stuff like Resurrection Merkab to now the the tones far more consistent through like through, through everything um but it's so good 
Um, I felt like the arrangement, you know, and this was something that was from the the resurrection of this band to now, you know, the the arrangements get a little bit predictable to me. I feel, you know, he especially like on Resurrection Macabre, he really he found a, a mold, a frame a songwriting framework and he just like dove right into it and that's like every song like you know he screamed the title of every song uh every song screamed the title of the song and every lyric and you know like it opened the song that way on that record and he doesn't do any of that in this one but you know the arrangements just got a little predictable and i mean it's a, it's not a huge gripe because the song they're they're really well done um the songs are good the you know the riffs carry a lot of weight here there are some riffs where you know he's written them so he can sing over them you know and stuff like that and and, and there are more for power uh than you know necessarily like prowess so you know but it just it just got you know it's like eh, you know it's like he's kind of he's working the formula he's working uh you know working the structure that he's used to works for him but by and large it's it's a forgivable thing um i was i was struck by there, you know, you go back to the earlier stuff and like his, you know, it's like he he, he works in four four most of the time, but then the riffs are where they're technical, like the 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 shape, the phrasing, the the atonal, the discordance, you know, that's where the 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 things get really technical, um, not so much like you listen to bands. You know, you know, modern death metal bands like uh, 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 Archspire or something where, like, in, you know, like 50,000 riffs in, in a two-minute song, stuff like that. <laughs> he he keep, so you, can, you can still really get into these songs and digest them, but then, but then the riffs have a lot of thought in them. The riffs have... The old school guys, we all grew up that way. You know, we listened to Sabbath and we listened to, the, the, you know, whatever the score, whatever we grew up on, Judas Priest, whatever it was. And and that's how we built the songs. And it was, you know, these big, tasty riffs. And then we build the songs that way. And I think that really, sh- and it shines. And that's and that's what he does. Um, I was just, but I was, you know, some of the more primitive riffs. And I was like, wow, you know, the, it's really kind of just kind of a real basic riff. But then again, like I say, it carries into the song and it carries so much weight and then then the drums go and it gets really brutal and it's like oh you know this is really punishing this is this is really it is very pummeling you know so um you know it's not as i don't know if it's more of an observation than a critique i don't know you know i guess it's in my nature to just be critical about everything and cynical and whatever but um and, yeah wait um, a minute whoa 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 <laughs> depressed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what? But then again, and then, um, <laughs> but then again, uh, you know, after you know, after Van Drunen left the band, it really, the band really became more. You know, he's the driving force, and and so he's like the you know he's the captain of the ship, and so it's all really kind of about what he's doing. I like you know, like the keyboard stuff that he introduced in Testimony, and it stayed you know pretty consistent throughout. I liked it. it I've feel like i feel like he was trying to carry a theme from the you know because he got the big intro he's got the big outro and then he's got these elements that he you know these 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 pieces of electronic keyboard orchestration and stuff that he's pieced together through the whole thing to me it felt like he was trying to say something you know i didn't have a lyric sheet i didn't feel like looking up all the latin I was just, I just spent a couple nights looking up Latin stuff for my own purposes. So I'm just like, man, too many of these. So I, you know, it was like, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but it just, to me, it felt like there was, there was purpose behind it, you know? Um, and I, you know, to, to, you know, Jim was, wasn't feeling, I, I thought it was good. I felt like, I felt like to me, it felt subtle to me. It felt like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kind of paste this in here. It goes with this. This is, you know, what I'm trying to say here with this musically, you know? um sonically whatever um but you know by, by and large it's just um you know it, it's it's just really well all really well, well put together you know um you know it's obviously you know the the production and everything like the drumming it's like triggered it's like 
Obviously, the producer and the engineer were working on the drums in the studio. Obviously, they're cleaning things up because that's just what everybody does now. You know, it's not often that you hear a, a record uh, on this level from this caliber of a band where they, they didn't pretty up everything. Um, uh, well, just thanks a lot, Carl. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He means it in a good way. <laughs> now, now, now I've got that stuck in my head. Thanks. Great. Great. I'm the, I'm the comic book guy from Simpsons. Anyway, um, so <laughs> how do I come back from that now? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> totally, 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 totally wrong. Totally. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> whatever, man. Um, so yeah, I, uh, you know, but all, I mean, again, you know, and I have to, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I have to, and again, I have to say that, and you know, I, I, you know, I, I really was pleased with all of it and I like it all. But again, uh, for me, you know, the first record, uh, it just, I, 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 I worship it. <laughs> he has a patch for that album cover on his, on his jacket. I'll thank I you do. not to touch I that do. patch. It is an original 1989 near mint <laughs> patch. <laughs> Your ice cream off of it. Oh man! Oh well. It's it looks, it's my fault for sitting here being sexy in front of all you guys. What am yeah, I supposed? The to internet. Do? The internet. Somebody handled this much sex. To be honest, it's, I know. It's, it's it's it was it was only a matter of time before somebody called out a doppelganger or some, said something. <laughs> <laughs> and it had to be me so yep uh, we, <laughs> it's all good man it's all good so yeah i mean uh but yeah definitely uh but you know musically sonically you know it's it's just it's just uh it's a solid venture uh front to back i mean we can get into you know favorites and less favorites you know eventually but uh you know definitely um that's yeah so back to you <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think I agree with your point, TJ. Even though it's you know really great, you are right. The songs at, by the end of the album, you know, the songs do start to feel a bit formulaic. You know that, that he, he's working that same mold uh, quite a bit, even though he does a good job with it. So I, I would agree. If with you that. go back and uh, listen to Resurrection Macabre, you know, take some time and check that one out. It's a great record. Mm -hmm. It's a great comeback record. But you'll see what I'm saying. It's like he just every song. You know, he the song starts and then he screams the title of the song, and then this every song follows kind of the same formula. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really kill it, but it's it's so kind of, you know, especially you know being a guitar player for so many years and you know quasi you know I'm a musician you know, and so you it just it's glaring to me. I see it, you know, where you know other people just be like it's banging, bro. You know, it's like yeah, it is absolutely for sure, but. You know, you give it a listen, you'll see totally what I mean. And, it, and it's, it's just, it, you know, he carries it up. But, you know, it's like, look, if it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I do spew. He does. <laughs> it is wretched. <laughs> Come to practice sometime. I'll yep. teach you how. <laughs> to suffer. <laughs> suffer. Uh, for me, I agree. I mean, it's hard to follow up TJ on that one because he nailed a lot of stuff. I do really like Tim's comment about... Um, I agree with Tim. The The songs being shorter are really nice. Um, I love the guitar sound. I love the riffing style. But one thing, Mameli's got kind of a... By the end of it, all the riffs kind of go. Da -da 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 I mean, they all have this kind of the same kind of feel to them. I, I can't. I can hear it in my head, but I can't make the sound. Um, and TJ and I were talking at practice uh, Monday about it. How I think people have it in their minds how like technical spheres is, and you listen to it, and it's not as technical as you think it is. I think there's right. some weird time. There's some weird timing on occasion, but. There's, it's like deceptively not, it's like, it feels like it should be more technical than it is if you really listen to it. There's and you're right. He does it. Space on there though. Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. And it's, um, you know, he's got to be able to sing over this shit and it, it's just the, the way he plays it, it sounds more technical than it really is. I mean, all of these notes are kind of in a box. 
to be, you know, he's playing in a box. Or you listen to like Skeleton on Your Shoulder by Corner, where it's like, like all these humongous note runs that who the right. fuck, there's like a very small percentage of people that can be uh, in that category of guitar player when it comes to this stuff. But no, he definitely, he definitely relies way more on a lot, you know, your four, four stuff. I mean, it's very much kind of very straightforward stuff. And then, and then he's letting, his riffs really carry a lot of the weight of that, you know, technical aspect of things. It's it's definitely, you know, um, it, it just it is what it is. But and um, for me, a big highlight on the album is um, Michael Vanderplicht, the drummer. He was in. He's been in Prostitute Disfigurement and also God Dethroned. Um, real sharp, good drum performance um really highlights these songs really well i like the compositions i like the production we're going to skip the production thing because we've all kind of said that it's a good sounding production but overall i like the album it kind of starts to peter out a little bit at the end for me but it's not a big deal all the songs are still really solid but let's move on to favorite least favorite songs alan uh, let's see two that stand out for me and they kind of stand up for the same reason. It's something that Jim mentioned earlier. Um, and again, I'm not good with instrument terminology, but you know, there's a couple of songs where they use this like really sick sounding kind of bent chord, string, riff, something something involving the guitar that just has this like wow sound that is really cool. It's the yeah. uh, uh, Sempinterus. Sempinterus for no Desert. Yeah. And the the title track uh, does that as well as well. And it's um, yeah, it just it really, you know, adds this little extra vibe to those songs. It's the kind of thing that in a lot of cases I don't like in metal songs, but the way they use it here, it's again, it's very quick. It doesn't take over the song or anything. You know, they're just chugging along. And then they do that one really sick little bent twisted chord or whatever. It's just like, Oh shit, that was cool. Uh, so kind of morbid yeah. angel a little bit yes. a little morbid yeah. angel in there yeah. very morbid angel uh and uh, yeah both, it really made me stop and just like pay attention like whoa what was that uh that's really cool so uh, both of those uh would probably be my favorites just because they've got that one extra little sick element uh worked into them as far as the least favorite i there really wasn't any song that i feel like oh this one's not good at all um i liked the way the inst the intro instrumental worked i thought it built really nice gave it a nice kind of soundtrack vibe i didn't think the outro was as effective i thought that i understood what they were trying to do bookending the rest of the album but for some reason it didn't have the same effect at the end of the album that may be a little bit of a cop out but if i have to pick a least favorite i'll say the instrumental outro didn't quite hit the mark right on uh jim uh first song ultra strong on this uh you know it sets a tone of the album it's 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 just a crusher start to finish you know yep. um you know everything about it's great the riffs are great the drums are great and and uh actually it's my favorite vocal performance from patrick on the whole record like yeah that's i think he's he's just super pissed on that one and uh it i i i i, I, I go back to that i've been going back to that one a lot this week uh Least favorite is the second song though. It was it was a huge downer. Uh, Deficus. Um, I I I just I didn't like the riffs. I really hated the orchestrations. Really over the top and weird. It seems out of place to me. And uh, I got I got scared on that song. You know, thinking like, oh no, maybe this record isn't going to be good. Yeah, you know, <laughs> high hopes for the first song, low hopes for the second. But then it it got fine after that third song on. You know, so um, definitely uh, a big massive skip for Deficus. we can uh, I'll, I'll leave the joke in the air for that one um but uh i also i, I mentioned earlier but number seven man i i even like wrote down the part where you know those, that riff comes in it's at two minutes and 45 seconds man listen to that song get to that part you know and if you don't bang your head then well fuck you <laughs> <laughs> right on That's awesome yeah <laughs> TJ, faves, least faves. Uh, so I, I really like the, um, well, here, let me, uh, let's see if we can. Uh... Periculum externum. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Periculum externum. It's uh, Latin for external danger. I don't know. 
so I like that song a lot. Um, it's it's you know got a lot of atonal riffs in it and stuff is pretty cool. Overall, I really like I pretty much like all the songs kind of equally well. Um, you know, there, there was little little things that you know I've already kind of touched on the the intro and the outro. While I really I I got what he was trying like like Alan you know, to touch on what he said you know kind of book ending, and then he's got like this theme that's kind of I I like that stuff better the little pieces of it in the songs and, and the from the outro it's kind of I don't know I mean I I'm usually kind of I like that stuff generally but these ones are a little ugh, I don't know it just wasn't I was more interested in, in the meat and potatoes that was in between them, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, but yeah, but that's kind of it. Uh, I overall, I really liked all of it. But the the the, the uh, pericidum externum was a was a cool one. I really liked that one a lot. Cool for me. Uh, Alan mentioned it, but the sempiternus is probably my favorite. It adds a little bit of um, they ease up on the the quicker tempo a little bit there's more feeling like that bend in the that chord or that note he plays it reminds me of um i don't know uh domination era morbid angel a little bit um i really like morbus propagation m <laughs> the the lead off track after the intro total ripper vocals sound great uh over the top Full frontal assault, like that a lot. Uh, my least favorite towards the end, Immortus, is starting to. I think my attention span is starting to wane a bit. They kind of. Um, it's not bad. It's not a bad song at all. I mean, it's just I. Uh, there's a lot of similarity in some of the riffs, and I'm and I feel like I've kind of by the three quarter mark, I've I'm kind of checking out a little bit. Um, again, I haven't spent as much time with it as you know if I've owned it for four years, but. You know, four or five times I've spun it. Um, that's probably, and again, it's not a bad song. I'm just starting to, to check out at that point. But yeah, let's go into judgment. Final thoughts. Since I'm up, I'll just say that um, I liked it. I thought it was a good album. If it turns up on the the cheap, I'll probably buy it and um, stick it in the stick it in the void over there along the wall for sure. Um, it's been fun. It's been a good record to check out. Alan, what do you think? Yeah, same. I was pretty happy with it um i went back to the music store the cd was already gone so fuck oh. it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh you yeah. see it you buy it that's the plan you yeah. see it you buy it, it it's usually Time, the best plan yeah. i am i am going to wait i'm not going to order this right away because i do want to see if it's an album i go back to some uh or if it's one where you know because we talked about it a little bit you know the, like you said marty the songs toward the end you do feel like okay maybe running out of gas a little bit as tj said you know the songs are following a little bit of a you know formula so i want to see if this is an album that i'm really you know anxious to revisit over and over or if it just sort of becomes a big blur so it's like that's a cool album but i'm having trouble remembering distinct things because the songs are all pretty close to each other if it sticks in my mind well then yeah this is one i'll be picking up and if um uh, if not, well, then uh, I'll be happy. You know, I'll get a, I'll buy a digital download of it or something. Uh, but either way, uh, really good album. Uh, it was cool to reconnect with this band and realize that, yeah, this is a reunion project that has been worthwhile. Um, I, I'm really skeptical of a lot of these bands that, whether you call it a reunion or a resurrection, whatever, you've got a big hiatus and then you try to get the band back together. And for me, a lot of times that doesn't prove to be very interesting, but seems like, you know, at least on the strength of this one album, Amelia is doing some cool stuff and I am going to, as such, work my way backwards and fill in uh, my gaps, check out some of these other albums that he's done in more recent years. Cause I like what he's doing. Yeah. I even listened to the, the album that came out before it had he on, I believe it was. And yeah, it's pretty good, man. It's solid. Yeah. I'm it has, it has the, the lowest rating on all of the ratings on a uh, metal archives for some reason, but it didn't sound well, bad to me. I mean, I don't know. The metal archives ratings. Well, that way madness lies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> all right, Jim, your thoughts, uh, final thoughts, judgment. Yeah, I, I I definitely think it's a, a strong record. Um, I I don't know that that I would pick it up because, and I think Scott Metal said it earlier. You know, it makes 
you, I just want to go back to the other ones. And that's not a bad thing um, because for me, and I, I, we talked about this before we started the show. Like I never really checked out for some reason, at least I don't remember test of the money, of the agents angels, but this made me go do that. Yeah. And I, 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 and, and, and the fact that it gave me that gift, it led me back to that record that he, it, that, that either hadn't heard at all or hadn't heard in ages. And I forgot about it. Like, put that back on the radar. I was so, I was really stoked to hear that. And then that got me into prog, proggy or death metal kind of state of mind. I started listening to some, I went back to some atheist and then it went way went to, from there to watchtower. And I think that's one of the, the coolest things about, you know, uh, this show for one, but also albums like this, you know, even if I'm like not going to rush out and buy them, they, they, you know, push me back into some areas that I haven't like traveled in, in, in my musical, you know, journey in a long time and and this album did that like you know i mean i was listening to so many so much cool stuff as a result of visiting this record that was the greatest gift for me but you know if, if you're really a fan of everything you know you know post testimony you know and, and or you or you would like to hear like a twist on that like a, a modern version of testimony of the ancients that's really what this album is so so it's solid yeah, yeah. tj yeah, I'd, uh, I'd probably give this album like a B, B plus ish. You know, I think it's, I think it's a, a it's a really good record. Um, I threw it into my into my uh, album collection on Spotify. I don't know that I'll buy it. I don't know, I don't know that I care about much of the you know enough to maybe own you know buy physical copies of it. I've got you know, I got the reissue of Consuming Impulse with the. Because apparently this was the cover. I know you can't really see this. This is a bunch of weird dudes eating each other. Um, apparently this was the cover that they wanted to have. And then eating each were, other in the yeah. Good Luck of Vegas way or in the uh, Fulci <laughs> yeah. film way? Yeah, the, it's definitely it definitely Fulci. Um, oh, okay, okay. I don't know if anybody. You know, I don't know if anybody can. Uh, there you go. Oh, your connection is so shitty. All we can see yeah, is I a know. foil. It, 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 yeah, it's a think of it's kind of an autopsy esque cover, but um, uh, minus the oral sex. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think minus the oral any, sex in the pit. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's yeah. any oral sex in it, but um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I uh, it's a good record. I put it, in, you know, and I added, you know, I actually, you know, I added two songs to my um my like songs list to my play, my regular <laughs> playlist too, actually, um, and uh, you know. It's 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 like Jim was saying. It's like I'm 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 a terribly nostalgic person, and and you know, and I, you know, he brought up when Alan decided to pestle. It's like I was oh cool, you know, um, kind of a palate cleanser from some of the stuff we've been listening to, on and off, and and uh, it just it it's the you know, I listened to it right away. I listened to this. And then I went and jumped right back, and I listened. I was like, "Well, I'm going to I'm going to listen to Testimony," and then I listened to Mally's Mouth Palm, and then I listened to Consuming Impulse, and you know, and it and it just I can just remember. I just I keep going back to when I got Testimony and like how it affected me because I was so into the other stuff, and then this came out, and you know, Testimony came out, and I'm like, "What the hell? Oh, this is all right," and I listened to it, listened to it, and. You know, walking around in the middle of winter with my my Walkman and my headphones, and you know, coming back from some keg party out in the boondock, you know, and um, it, it just it kind of <laughs> it just brings all that back, you know. Um, again, pestilence is, is a big big part of you know, uh, a big part of my you know just formation in, in my taste and stuff. So it was definitely cool here. I think it's a good record. Um, I have not, I've listened to Little Hattie on, I haven't, you know, and then the first, the, the first two re resurrection records, you know, I listened to those a little, little bit, you know, uh, I really liked the, the resurrection macabre a lot. Actually, I did listen to that quite a bit, but I'm going to go back and check some of that out too, as a, uh, you know, as we meander along here, but, uh, yeah. definitely, it was definitely cool. Well, sweet. There you have it. Um, little underrated maybe but still slogging it out after 30 plus years it's good to see um pestilence still going along and putting out quality material thank you alan for picking that up it was good to it was good to uh check that out and as uh for next week i am picking and i'm going to stay in a very similar realm i guess i've been um listening to this album a little bit 
Haven't got into it as much as I've wanted to, but I've enjoyed it. I thought we would check out. We'd stick with another new newer album. Um, Hypocrisy's Worship. Oh, cool. I've been meaning to check that out. Figure we'll give this one a it's it's proper due. Give it a good spin. Uh, news flash, nothing really new to see here, but it's it's pretty solid. It'll be interesting to, you know, get a full dissection on it, I guess. And um, also another little notice, TJ is going to be taking a little bit of a break from the show. Um, so it'll be myself, Jim, and Alan, of course. And maybe there'll be a fourth member. Maybe one of the Chris's will come back. If not, maybe we'll get Rick from the Dreadful Minutes on for an uh, album <laughs> event. What do you think, Rick? You want to jump on and do one of these one of these nights? That would be cool. It'd be fun to have Rick back on the show again, for sure. Super great guy. Although he won't be able to make uh, BTO jokes in the chat if we have him on the main screen. We're giving up a lot, but uh, I think it'd be worth it. <laughs> no, I'm so, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, co- I'm gonna come on and watch, and then make comments about what you guys look like. <laughs> you guys all look really dumb. You look like other dumb people on TV. Dumb dummies. Yeah. yeah. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, El Duche. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! The <laughs> program notes. Everybody, get ready. We are going to be uh, getting caught in a mosh on Friday with our friend Philip over at um, Chromium Dioxide Radio. Yes, the barbecueshner has not requested; he has demanded <laughs> that we do a deep dive on. Um, anthrax and uh i think i talked him into doing a ranking which i i don't know if alan was too psyched about the ranking idea but we're going to do a ranking on anthrax it'll be fine fine. i just didn't realize that we were uh that was a plan but nope i we can do that Uh, i'm I'm going to give them all a grade of killer bees (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, thankfully that one won't be in the it will not be in the ranking i don't think no 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 we can skip that one but uh uh, j- j- just warming up for Friday night, uh, let's say. We're going to be ready. And, uh, and Chromie, if you're still out there, you, you, you owe me that homework assignment before you're allowed to uh, go live Friday night. Do your, do your, uh, do your essay, son. He, uh, we haven't, he's been quiet for a while. He may have passed out and fell in the fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, It's an anthrax show, not a Metallica. Don't jump in the fire, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, and also, there two. might be Woman another. Woman Woman Woman. <laughs> and another program note: next Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday, the the uh, the mother of all Halloween rankings will be happening with Matt from the Dark Path, and also our friend Jim Morbid Crank here. We might be getting you on a Friday show one of these days. So set, we'll have to get that figured out. We'll have to pick out a topic and get you on for Friday, mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> Let's talk but, about TJ's lounginess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TJ can't be in the chat because he's going to be sleeping. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It was another fun um, chat this evening, and we will be back next Wednesday with Hypocrisy's Worship. So for anybody that wants to check that out and give it a spin so you can be in tip-top shape with us, that would be awesome. Um, not too hard to find should be on Spotify all day long should be good and until then we will see you Friday anybody have anything to add okay then everybody remember <laughs> El Duce says remember- I can smell your cunt <laughs> oh. oh is this wait 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 what is it this chicken smells drunk and I think I like it <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. I, I have a I have a new outro phrase for us for Friday night. I'm, so I'm totally we're, nailing we're, I'm totally nailing these. What are you talking about? You're nailing something. <laughs> Maybe the chicken. Uh, <laughs> all right, until then we'll have to hear what the new uh catchphrase is on Friday, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll talk at you later. See ya. <laughs>